so team keep it clean first and foremost i gotta say i really appreciate y'all because everybody in the comment section who said happy anniversary anybody who sent a dm saying happy anniversary i, I appreciate y'all like crazy today is our official uh 11 year anniversary so i i love y'all i love my wife i love my family um and i, I just appreciate y'all being part of this family y'all have been here through a lot of the years uh, of us of our marriage um, and just of our lives in general so I, I really really appreciate y'all like crazy I appreciate y'all putting up with all my dad jokes I know Carter he got to put up with a lot of the dad jokes too but it's all good it's all part of the process right baby but anyway um with today uh, being our anniversary it is going to be a very busy day for us um first we getting ready to head to uh Carter has a field day and I and I get to be one of the parents that participates in it, that helps navigate some stuff and whatnot. So I'm, I'm excited for that. So I'm gonna be all over there shooting some hoops and whatnot. But anyway, um, so we're gonna be doing that, and then of course whatever else we get into, we get into. Um, but I, this is gonna be an episode of question from subscribers, but it's gonna be raw. It's gonna be straight raw. It ain't gonna be edited and all that with all the questions popping up in the side of the of the the screen and whatnot. Cause I just ain't got time for it today. So my apologies to y'all. But. Without any further ado, let's just get straight into it because um, Rashad Bateman, he is somebody that we've been waiting uh, for him to break out, waiting for to see him go off. And like I told y'all going into the season, I expected him to be wide receiver one. Lamar said he was going to be wide receiver one, but they just, it ain't happened yet. Uh, wide receiver one has been Zay Flowers all day, every day by far. Not even close. Nobody else has been close. Not Odell Beckham Jr., not Rashad Bateman. Mark Andrews is not a wide receiver. He's a tight end. I would always hate when people, oh, who's Ravens wide receiver one? People say, Mark Andrews. Jews? No, he's a tight end. But anyway, um, first question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, hey, Dan Graven, hope you've been doing well. I have lost nearly 50 pounds, which is a small step where I need to be, but it's a step in the right direction. Hey, that's really good, man. I'm happy for you. That's that's great, actually. Like, I, I, I'm trying to lose some weight myself. So, hey, I'm trying to get right there behind you, but that, that is great because that, that's a significant amount of weight, and that shows your consistency and your commitment to your goal. So I'm happy for you. We all happy for you, man. So shout out to Oreo Cookie, man. Said I say this not to brag, but as a way of saying, if you put your mind to something, you can do anything. Uh, with Rashad Bateman's slow ramp up in yards and momentum, I am reason to think he could have a big second half of the season. What do you think? Sorry you're so long, and have a good rest of your day. Hey, this wasn't a long question at all. Trust me, we we used to get paragraphs. Like some people send five, six paragraphs. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but those are long questions. This is not a long question at all. But anyway, with Rashad Bateman, oh man. Um, him having a second, a great ha second half of the season would be amazing. Um, just really Ravens getting anything out of anybody else. Now they have been getting a lot out of Mark Andrews too now, but Ravens being able to get other people involved besides Zay Flowers and Mark Andrews, like a Rashad Bateman, like a Odell Beckham Jr. Nelson Aguilar has been he he been getting involved here and there too. But um, especially with Rashad Bateman, man, uh, his confidence seemed like it's slowly ramping up, and I'm sure he's really confident in himself already, but. I think it's important the same way that like they, they design a lot of plays for Zay Flowers. Do something for Rashad too. Like seeing him on the jet sweep and I, hey, Harbaugh, he 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 uh corrected, I think, was it Garrett Downing or James? He he corrected one of the reporters because they were like, Oh yeah, we saw Rashad Bateman on the end of the round and Harbaugh said, No, it was a jet sweep. So I was like, all right, Harbaugh, yeah, hey, I, I ain't no X's and O's guy. Y'all know that. I ain't I don't know about a lot of that stuff. But I do know about them jet sweeps, and we called it a jet sweep, so we were right from the jump. So thank you, Jonathan Harbaugh. But anyway, um, it, it was nice to see him get involved in a different way and him to just to, to be involved, period. So if they could just design some stuff for him, too, it would be nice. Just And I, and I know they, I'm sure they do, but sometimes the defense may be playing it a certain way to where they can't get it to him. Um, so it, I think it's important that with Rashad Bateman, because you want to find out who he is, man. You, you want to find out what you got in Rashad Bateman, and I think right now they just – they still don't know all the way yet. The potential is there, but we're tired of talking about potential. We want to see results. Um, and speaking of results, next question came from my guy, Brendan. And he said, Stanley to right tackle. Uh, he said, hey, what's going on? Hope all is well and happy anniversary. Oh, I didn't even know he sent this last night. He said, happy anniversary to you and your wife. I appreciate that, Brendan. Uh, I have a question about Ronnie Stanley. I've seen him uh, a lot. Uh, I've seen him in a lot of O-line run packages where he's blocking on the right side. Could this be a trend? Do you think they will eventually move him to right tackle and we draft a left tackle? This could bolster our line and be really strong for y years going forward. Um, the thing with Ronnie Stanley is if he moved to right tackle, cool. I'm sure he would do a phenomenal job at it. But how is his body like? Because he, he misses a lot of time. Ronnie Stanley misses a lot of time. So whether he's at left tackle or right tackle... I think you still have to have a good backup. You have to have somebody who stays ready so they ain't got to get ready because 
it's like we're at the point where with Ronnie Stanley, the expectation is that he's going to miss time. Uh, we hope that he doesn't, but the expectation is that he is. So it's it's just it's unfortunate, but it is what it is uh, at this point. So, hey, if he moved to right tackle, great, cool, but he was they would still need to have a serviceable backup. Uh, next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's up, Engraven? I, I was thinking about Todd Munkin in his play-calling situation because after the Arizona game, Harbaugh and Lamar both spoke about how they should have ran the ball more in the first half with more balance. I'm scratching my head because all through OTAs and training camp, they talked about how Lamar had the freedom to check in and out of plays at the line of scrimmage. If Munkin is calling all of them pass plays, why wasn't Lamar checking in them into some run plays if he had that so-called freedom? Just curious to hear your thoughts on that. Hashtag Ravens Nation. Um, I'm thinking of you, a quarterback. I mean, those plays like go in your favor because you can throw the ball. You can throw the ball a lot because they were throwing the ball a lot in that first half of that game. So, um, and I, I think with him, he just uh, maybe he was thinking about it. Maybe he was like, you know what? I, maybe he felt like something was gonna work in the passing game. Maybe he felt like he saw something. You know how when you try something and you just miss it, you just come so close and you're like, ah, you know what? I see it, but I just gotta fix a couple of things. Maybe that was him uh, in that first half of the game. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And maybe, since this is raw, that ain't getting cut out. Uh, and maybe he was in on them possibly setting it up for the second half. Because maybe what they were doing was throw, doing the pass in the first half and then trying to throw the Cardinals off, keep the Cardinals on their toes with the passing game. Then they're like, all right, we're really going to eat them up with the run game in the second half uh, of the game. So maybe that's what it was. Who knows? Uh, he also talked about, I hate to say it, but the Ravens needed to be in the trade market for a new left tackle next offseason. Oh, they need to be in the market for a new left tackle next offseason. All right, same Ronnie Stanley is more and more of a liability than all pro lately. Mm. Shaking my head. Just curious to hear your thoughts on that. And yeah, see, team keep it clean. Be on the same page with so much stuff, man. Because I, I do believe, again, and I know my guy Brandon asks, oh, what about if Ronnie Stanley switched to right tackle? All right, cool. If he's at left tackle or right tackle, like Ravens, in my opinion, need to get somebody else who's ready. And I think they need to draft somebody rather early. Um, does it have to be first round? Ah, not necessarily, because I think you're still locked in with Ronnie Stanley for a little while. But, like, you, you got to get somebody who, who can come in and do it. Um, if you get one of them players that play on both sides of the line coming out of college, okay, cool. But coming out of college, that, that's straight. But you got to get somebody who's, who's going to be ready to do it, in my opinion. And then the last question that came from my guy, George. See, this is a long one. He said, trade deadline drama. This, he sent this on November 1st, so after the trade deadline. Good morning, Graven. I hope all is well with you and the family. Okay, I got to vent a little. I'm a little disappointed we didn't make a move as well. But, yes, I, I am too. Oh, I was too. But now, now it's like, okay, moving on. Uh, but... Most of us fans were over the top on how EDC handled this past offseason. Oh, how short our memories are. Frankly, it bothered me seeing how fans were posting some downright ignorant things on Lacey DaCosta's social media platform last night. I, I did see that. I, I saw, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's unfortunate. Shout out to Lacey, though, because she does, like, she's out there. She's out there on social media. She lets it be known that she's on social media. People know who she is. Like, <laughs> it ain't just anybody with that last name, DaCosta. Um, so for her to continue to allow herself to be out there in social media, uh, that's a lot. I remember when we had her on just asking her about that. Um, and she talked about it that there can be a lot of negative people as we do see all the time, unfortunately. Um, but there's still a lot of positive people too. Um, and she wants it to be where social media can be a positive place for people. So, um, yeah, that was unfortunate. Some of the stuff that we saw, he said, how are we now a mediocre team with no hope for the postseason because we didn't make a move before the deadline one and done in the playoffs is what I keep seeing being posted. Hey, I would certainly hope not. And, and, and I think it's just about recency bias, I, I, I believe, because uh, a lot of us, we wanted the Ravens to make a move. We expected the Ravens to make a move. But when they didn't make a move, it was really disappointing, especially because the trade deadline has so much excitement, like free agency, a lot of excitement, the draft, a lot of excitement. But trade deadline, that's that's probably the most exciting time uh, in the middle of the regular season. So a lot of us were excited. We all hyped and whatnot. And when you get excited for something and it doesn't happen, you get disappointed. So I think that's what it was. He said, so many fans saying, if Gus the Bus gets hurt, we are doomed. Well, that could be said about every position on our roster. Making a move just to make a move just doesn't seem like a good idea. The price for a player has to be right for both sides involved. Were there some trades I would have liked? Absolutely. Like Chase Young, I would have loved. But so many fans act like all these players were available for us when a few of them. It was never the case as teams said. They weren't dealing some certain said players. But it takes two to tango. But going forward, we should have, we should have nothing but positivity and high hopes. This isn't Madden, and I believe our roster is as good as it ever has been to compete for a Lombardi trade. Trophy. Yeah, they, they, they uh the roster is good. Um, the roster is certainly good. Uh, but it wouldn't have hurt hurt it to add even more talent, add even more strength. And I think like you like you mentioned about Gus Edwards. I mean, it is something to think about. 
Uh, and obviously we don't want it to happen, but like Ravens' depth at running back is certainly like it's it's thin. Um, so we'll see, man. We'll see. I I do expect them like now maybe even more. Why they still rely on Gus, but to really share the wealth uh, and add Keith Mitchell in the mix a lot more too, just to ease Gus and rest him and because the playoffs is around the corner man the regular season is going to go by like super fast unfortunately which is really sad because we love the regular season too and the whole NFL season we love it but it's going to go by fast um so I'm sure they want Gus and company to be well rested and just them to be uh in good shape uh for the long run Anyway, he said, and that is due to DaCosta's team building over the past few seasons and the stars we do have. Some say he has missed on second round picks, but at the same time, he has hit on other late picks and undrafted players like Geno Stone as an example of a late pick. Um, the drafts overall for Eric DaCosta, there have been, there have been some hits, but there have been a lot of misses. Uh, we know the drafts are a gamble. Nothing is guaranteed with the drafts, but uh, the drafts have been rough. But the 2021 now. This year, you're getting a lot of production out of that class. Like, it's Patrick Queen. I think it's Geno Stone. It's Matabike, Devin Duvernay. I know I'm missing somebody, too. I know Malik Harrison is in there as well. Um, did I say Geno Stone? I think. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said the cost in the organization has made some blunders and isn't perfect, but what front office is? <coughs> Excuse me. This team is well-constructed and able to compete with anyone in the league, and I feel us fans need to get behind this team and enjoy the ride as we have the real potential. Oh, I'm sure all the fans of the Ravens are still fans of the Ravens. They're just frustrated. That was it. They're just frustrated. And that's how fans are. Fans express their frustration differently. Every fan does. Some fans do it with respect. Some fans, unfortunately, don't do it with respect. But everybody expresses it differently. So I think it is important to handle yourself with respect. Um, but anyway, he said the trade deadline shouldn't have taken away all this excitement we have for this new offense, free agent additions, and the determination that we see in our team leaders like Lamar and Roquan. Uh, we have some good games ahead with a nice home stretch at the bank. Let's handle our business, stand by our team, and see where this season ends up. I'm just as excited now as I was before the season, and everything is still in front of us. We lead the AFC North and are tied for first in the AFC Conference, right, where we need to be to handle our business. Yeah. So, and, and so big, big, this is a huge weekend. Every weekend moving forward is a huge weekend for the Ravens because you got the Dolphins and the Chiefs. Um, the Dolphins got, I think they six and two, I want to say. And the Chiefs, I believe, are six and two because they lost to the Lions and they lost to the Broncos last Sunday. So that's a huge game. Hey, it'd be great if they tie. If they tie, that would help the Ravens out because they would be six and two and one. So the Ravens will have well, Ravens still got to handle their business against the Seahawks and like. So again, it's a tight race. It's gonna be a tight race. And then you got all these other AFC North teams. Just they just keep winning and they like trying to crawl back. And it's like, man, go away, leave us alone, man. But anyway, we'll see how that goes. Uh, he also said, "I'm just as excited now as I was before uh, the season, and everything is still in front of us." That's true. Um, oh, I read that already. Uh, let's get positive and stay positive. The end game is the same, and we are sitting pretty. Sorry for the rant, but we are right where we need to be to accomplish our goals. Eye on the prize. Love what you do. Stay positive, and team, keep it clean. Appreciate that, George. That was a real nice way to take us out. Love y'all.